Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to a uh, second installment of my review on the Apple TV, the new generation, the fourth generation Apple TV. And if you want to see my main, the actual review part, I'm going to post a, a card on this video and you can go and check it out there. This is just more or less to show you the differences and how the setup actually varies from the new generation from the old generation. And it is quite different. What I did is I factory reset my Apple TV just so I can show you this. So it's a uh, I'm going to have to log into everything again, but so be it. That's what I get. That's why I do these things. So, um, pair your remote. So you have to hold the menu and plus button on the remote and uh, it'll pair the remote. Now, when you get it out of the box, I believe this is actually already done for you. Uh, and this is where you'll start. But in this case, here we are. So uh, now my remote is paired. We're going to start English here. Um, choose your region, which is obviously just choose your region. And you can set up your with device or set up manually. I wanted you to set up with device because it was so awesome last time I did it. So set up with device. Unlock your iOS device. Enable Bluetooth. Hold your device close to the Apple TV. Got my trusty iPhone 6S Plus. Uh, just unlock the device like I have right here. And boom! Little guy comes up saying, Hey, set up your Apple TV. Do you want to set up your Apple TV now? Heck yeah, I do. So hit continue. And... It's going to just go via Bluetooth and send some cool stuff right over to that guy over there. And I don't have to do anything. It's going to take in my, uh, my Wi-Fi password. It's going to take my Apple ID and password. It's going to set the whole dang thing up so I don't have to do anything except for the external apps that I will eventually download. Now, obviously, you may have to do a little bit more of authentication for downloading from the App Store, putting your password in again to get that and such. But right now... On, the, on my phone, it's asking me for my Apple ID and password. So, uh, this is obviously for security. So, uh, I'm going to enter in my password. It already had my Apple ID listed. I'm not going to show you that because it is my Apple ID. And then I hit OK. And now it's sending it off. And you just wait, basically. So, <coughs> apologize for that. Um, while I wait and let the information send over to the Apple TV, um, now it is asking what I'd like to send information to Apple, which is basically user information. And if you don't want to, that's fine. If you're more of a privacy person, I'm okay with set setting stuff. And now we go back into the screen here. We're going to enable location. That's what I do. Um, I'm going to use Siri. Um, I'm going to automatically download stuff. I'm going, sure, why not? I don't care about sending my stuff to Apple. And I absolutely want to share with developers so they can work on getting their stuff better. Terms and conditions, I absolutely agree with those. And whammo, we're in. I didn't have to do anything with this little remote to get my password and everything on there. My phone's back to normal. Um, it was basically the whole time. But now, I can go over. I can go to, you know, watch stuff. I can go to the iTunes store, but I can go over to the App Store and start downloading my applications. So in this case, obviously, I'm going to... Well, let's go over to Featured again. I'm going to go download. Let's go download HBO Now right away. And because I've already downloaded it, it has just a little, little download button, so I'll click on that, and it's just going to automatically start downloading. So let's go back. While it's doing that, let's get Netflix as well, since I've already paid, I've already paid even though it was free. There's not a get symbol here, it's just install, which basically means that I don't have to worry about entering passwords and stuff in. Let's go back out. I'm going to get Hulu. I'm going to go back out. While that's still then get YouTube. YouTube's awesome, right? But you know, just for cakes of it, let's, I did not download Showtime yet. Um, and so now rather than a iCloud download thing, I have a get symbol. So let's click on get. And now I have to put in my password for the first time to, to give it a justification that I actually am who I say I am. So uh, I'm going to throw my password in there and I'll be right back. One thing I wanted to, to point out here with the actual keyboard itself is that you can change between capital, lowercase, and symbols uh, with even going down here or just hitting the play pause button, just like you did on the, the old Apple TV. Um, I think the symbols actually have to go... Yeah, you have to actually go down there. So the play, play pause is going to take you between capital letters. I'm sorry. But the big thing is, is that if, uh, for instance, if I have uh, just one uppercase level, rather than hitting the play pause button, I can actually push and hold the trackpad and it's going to bring up the capital letter of the letter that I'm highlighting and then I can just do that instead rather than hit play pause hit the capital hit play pause to get back to the lowercase level uh, and if oh no no that's not the right letter I can hit menu um, 
Same thing goes if, let's say, I put uh, an L in here. Oh, that wasn't the right letter. I don't have to go all the way to the right to do that delete. Push and hold to get the capital up. And if I swipe, just swipe to the left. Boom, it's going to take that letter out. And now I can do the capital instead of the lowercase, right? Uh, and sometimes the, there's going to be symbols on some of these. So if I go over here, P. Uh, no, P is just going to be one that, if I go to Q. Oh, maybe I shouldn't. Okay, so O, for instance. All those little hyphen O's and stuff that you could use as a password, they are listed in there. If you just hover over the O and just push and hold the trackpad, you're going to get this little guy. So um, I'm all set. I already put in my password. I'll hit OK. And it should just automatically... Oh, yeah. So it, here's where you get for the first time you set up. Do you never want to require a password and just... Boom. It's going to download anything you do. Always require your password, which... You know, it gets really tedious to enter in your password all the time, or it would just require after 15 minutes. I do the require after 15 minutes because if I'm sitting on the couch and I'm doing things great, but if my kids are going to try to purchase things, I'd rather be around when they're purchasing things. Now, later, um, if you download another free app and you're putting your password in, it will ask you, would you like us to just not ask you about free apps? It will ask you that question, um, but after this is. So that's... In a nutshell, if I go back here now, let's get out of the App Store. Now, these are going to be my apps, and they're going to be listed. Just as with the old Apple TV, you highlight over an app. For instance, you do push and hold. Now I can move this guy around, right? I can put him where I want to put him. Uh, I'm going to put him there. Um, what I like to do is I, like, I use a lot of my computers, so I'm going to stick him up here. Let's see here. Yeah, I'm going to put him there. Um, and then, actually, I'm going to put music up there, too. So, I'm going to, you know, of course, you, you make the menu however you want to make the menu. And that's one of the great things about Apple TV in general. It's always been like that. But this makes it a lot easier with uh, building it rather than hiding apps. You add the apps that you want, and then you're not worried about storing those other ones. So, you know, one thing before I go, um, if you want to delete an app, one thing I did find out this took a little bit, but, but let's say I'm going to get rid of Showtime because I don't use it anyway because I don't have a subscription, but... Push and hold like you're going to move it, but don't let go. Keep holding it, and boom. Press play, pause to delete that baby. And then it asks you, and gone. Sorry, one more thing as well that I didn't throw in here. But uh, for the setup, usually you want to get, obviously, this. the neat thing about this new controller is that it has the volume and the TV controls on here. I did not set this up. So, like in my review I showed you in the settings... Um, if I go down to, let's see, remotes and devices, this is automatically set here. I did not change any of this. Uh, turn your TV on, on, volume control, auto, right? Um, I did not tell it, you know, in the, you saw the setup when you get to the menu. I did not show, tell it what TV I had or anything. But if I hit the volume up and down button, it's already changing my Sony TV. So, one of the neat things is, is that it works really good. And if I push and hold the, the home button on here... I don't know if I actually showed this on the review. You can put the thing to sleep. If I put the thing to sleep, not only will it put the Apple TV to sleep, but it turned the TV off as well. So, one last thing I wanted to point before it's back to me. So, back to me. That is set up on the new Apple TV. I hope it makes a lot more sense now. Um, and I wanted to just do this as an additional video, not cumbled into the big 30-some minute video uh, review that I've already done. So, set up on the new Apple TV. And, of course, if anything changes, I'll let you know and I'll keep you posted. Thank you again for watching, and I appreciate all of my backers that have been following me ever since I started. And, uh, of course, subscribe above, comment below, and I have an open email address, appletv at thetechgooch.com. If you have any questions, comments, or want any, me to show you anything on the new Apple TV, um, by all means, shoot me an email, and I'll be sure to include it on a new video, as long as I have the possibility of doing it. So, thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.